Dear students, in this session we will discuss another aspect of plant reproduction and we begin with bryophytes. Bryophytes is a category which includes mosses and liverworts and they normally grow on rocks and if they grow on rocks then it is very simple to understand that they have contributed a lot for succession of plant kingdom. Normally bryophytes are called amphibians of plant kingdom. Children you know about amphibians that they live in water as well as on land and their part of life cycle or reproductive part is taking place in water. So without water they cannot reproduce that is about amphibia. Coming to bryophyta why we call them amphibians of plant kingdom because they do grow on soil or on rocks but for reproductive purposes they need water and hence they need aquatic medium to complete their life cycle or sexual reproduction. Coming to the way reproduction takes place which is slightly complicated we need to interlink certain informations to understand how reproduction takes place here. Let us start right from the beginning to make you understand the process. First thing the male reproductive part is called antheridium and it will produce antherozoids. The female sex organ in this case is called archegonium and it will produce one single egg. The antherozoids which are produced are normally biflagellate. This is one part. Now bryophytes are found on rocks and these sex organs are there on the plant which is not very much differentiated but yes it has sex organs. Now these antherozoids move through water and reach the egg and fertilize it. Before I go into further details let me tell you this particular structure of bryophyte is gametophyte which is having antheridium and archegonium which is producing antherozoids and egg and this is gametophytic structure or we call it gametophyte and it is haploid in nature. Please pay attention to the word haploid half the number of chromosomes and that is why we call it gametophyte and it is going to produce gametes that is also why we call it gametophyte. Now it has produced gametes which are delivered in water and they will fuse the antherozoid will reach the egg and fertilize it and now you have a body called zygote and now in this zygote you have diploid number of chromosomes because gametophyte was haploid it produced haploid gametes two gametes fused produced zygote and now it is diploid in nature this zygote will undergo normal mitotic division to produce a sporophyte please again remember it is not going into reduction division right now so a sporophyte is produced which lives on gametophyte because gametophyte is photosynthetic so this sporophyte gets food through gametophyte now this sporophyte some of the cells will undergo meiosis and produce haploid cells these haploid cells will grow and produce gametophyte so this is the cycle of bryophytes which is little complicated but we have to interlink the informations to understand which is slightly different from other plants from other animals as well so gametophyte is the basic structure which bears reproductive structures like antherozoids produces antherozoids and produces egg through archegonium and they fuse and produce zygote which will develop into a sporophyte a sporophyte is diploid this will undergo meiosis produce haploid cells which will grow into gametophyte again will have sex organs like antheridium and archegonium so that is about 
graphite and as I have told you already the good examples are mosses and liverworts and you can see mosses growing very easily on rocks near the uh, water bodies and quite green in color. Next category we are, we are discussing now is pterodophytes and pterodophytes a good example is horsetail or fern. You all have heard about fern. You have seen also fern around your house in your school. Now this particular category of plants called pterodophytes they grow on soil, they are terrestrial in nature majorly and also sometimes are medicinal, are used for medicinal purposes. When I say terrestrial, then one more point comes into picture and that is that they have well developed xylem and phloem. Children, you all have heard about these terms xylem and phloem, they help in transport of water minerals and food material in the plant. Pterodophytes are the plants where for the first time in the story of evolution the xylem and phloem appeared. So that is the importance of pterodophytes. Second point about reproduction here is that the main body of the plant is sporophyte. Like in previous category you studied that it was gametophyte but in this case the main body is sporophyte. It will produce germ cells or gametes. It has well developed root, stem, leaves like any other plant. Because the main body is sporophytic that means it will produce spores and once it produces spores then naturally further development will take place. Now, for producing spores, there will be sporangium on the body of the plant. You have seen cone bearing plant. In fact, they also come into this category. So, sporangium will produce spores which are present in the cones. So, you can see one fern in this particular slide. There is sporophyte, strobilus, cones and finally the spores. Now when these spores develop, the multicellular body which they produce is now the gametophyte. That means sporophyte was the main body and it produced gametophyte. So that is again the alternation of generation. Pterodophytes which are the first truly terrestrial plants, they begin their story of reproduction with sporophytic stage and complete by gametophytic stage. Children, we are now discussing about gymnosperms and good examples are pines, the cycles you all have seen. You must have enjoyed sometimes collecting the cones. Those all plants come in this category. Redwood tree, which is supposed to be the tallest tree in the world, is also falling in this particular category. In this particular slide, you can see uh, the redwood tree the car going underneath the stem. It is very huge and very big in size and very tall also. Coming to the reproductive part of this category, gymnosperms. It produces microspores and megaspores. That means sporangia is there. These spores are present in cones. The spores are of different sizes. They are male spores and they are female spores. The male spore is of course pollen grain. The female is going to be ova. These pollen grain are discharged in water. They reach the ova. In other words, the pollens are motile and ova is not that motile. Hence, pollen will reach the ova and fertilize it and hence the zygote is formed and now you have cones having these spores and this is how the reproduction in gymnosperms go. So gymnosperms are more developed category, more differentiated and producing two kinds of spores different in looks, different in function and one is motile 
and other is not motile. So, this is all about gymnosperms. We will now see how reproduction takes place in angiosperms. Children, you all know angiosperms are flower bearing plants, flowering plants. And whenever you get chance to study plant or flower in your classroom, you bring this flower from a flowering plant. So, reproduction is rather simplified, but very complete and takes place in a nice way. As usual, the pollen grains are produced, ovules are produced. For that, each flower is having the reproductive part. You must have heard about androsium, gynesium. Androsium you can also call pistil. That means, stamens, the male part is produced in pistil and the egg, the female part is produced in gynosium. So, pistil is there, egg apparatus is there. The pollination can be self pollination or cross pollination depending upon about which tree or which flower we are talking about. So, all the flowering plants whatever you can see fall into this category. So, pollen grains and ovules are within the flower. The main thing to note that ovule is within the ovary or within the fruit that means it is not naked it is covered whereas in the previous category that is in gymnosperms the seeds are naked in angiosperms the seeds are not naked so this is about angiosperms in angiosperms there is double fertilization and it has some significance also there is alternation of generation we have studied about gametophytic stage and sporophytic stage so, that alternation is also to be understood. We first begin with double fertilization in angiosperms. This particular slide explains the details. To understand life cycle of angiosperms, we understand this particular slide. You can see mature flower on a sporophyte on the plant and this will be 2N. That means diploid. Then anther will produce microspores and ovule will produce ovary. Now, this production took place because of meiosis. It has become haploid from diploid. So, it was 2N and now it is N. In other words, pollen grain is N and also ovule is N. Now, this pollen grain will reach on stigma. It will finally do the fertilization by making pollen tube it will reach up to egg and once fertilization takes place you can see the zygote is formed that is again to n and now embryo which is developing definitely will be to n it has embryo it has food supply it has seed coat and when this seed germinates then it produces the mature flower or mature plant again so you can see the life cycle of angiosperm it started with 2N, became single N and again became double N. I will now explain to you children alternation of generation which will mean gametophyte producing sporophyte and sporophyte producing gametophyte. Unless this is happening, the life cycle of the plant will not be complete. So, to understand gametophyte the haploid or diploid, sporophyte, haploid or diploid and how it is alternating, we can understand what is happening in double or alternation of generation. In this session, we have discussed about bryophytes, tadophytes, gymnosperms and angiosperms and also we have tried to understand concept of double fertilization and also concept of alternation of generation including gametophytic generation and sporophytic generation. With this, we come to the end of this session. Thank you.